the situation that the guys who had the heaviest capital investment for 100 way were the ones that were getting picked off. When we started here, there was roughly 20 guys, all milk and small dairies like this, were it. But our leisure time uh, increased quite a bit. Uh, we found out that uh, you could feed quite a bit less and uh, make quite a bit more money, uh, but a lot less work. For 25 years, I chased high milk production. Mm -hmm. Now I don't. You, you think more in terms of milk per acre than milk per mm -hmm. animal unit. And that's hard to wrap your head around. Mm -hmm. and if you're trying to set records for breeding purposes, it might not fit. Mm -hmm. But if you're interested in making money to pay off a mortgage, if you really want to build wealth, real wealth, this is like oil or timber or mining. All real wealth goes back to the soil eventually. Everything else is secondary in industry. Actually, I'm going to say the herd health in general is better okay. if thin cows are healthy. Mm -hmm. um, feeding likes certainly improve. Mm -hmm. um, respiratory diseases are non-existent in an outside environment. Mm -hmm. um, very little mastitis. Not sure that's because of grazing or despite mm -hmm. it. Yeah. The health of the herd when we switched to grazing uh, became better almost overnight. Our mastitis uh, wasn't great in, to start with, and uh, we very seldom have a mastitis case anymore. What I really notice is with the fresh cows, you know, they have all that lunge area on the pasture, and they have good footing on top. When the cows that might have ended up in a hospital situation, out in the grass, they'll move right back into the mainstream within just a few days because it's, they're just not getting banged up. Or The uh, cows are, I feel, a lot more healthy. They, uh, they get to roam around and, and eat, and uh, they get lots of exercise being uh, out on grass. Uh, they breed back a lot quicker and uh, easier. Uh, they don't give quite as much uh, milk, but their components, uh, butter, fat, protein, uh, increase uh, with the grass feeding. When you have a lot of cows, they lose some of their herding instinct. Um, for better or for worse, as the herd, we shrink and put it all in just one group again and then put them on the grass, they go back more into a design society with a hierarchy, you know. It's more like it was when I was a kid. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, they get more independent. They figure things out different. <laughs> they don't need you as much. <laughs> Part of what makes it work so well is that uh, the cows last much longer, many more lactations, and of course then you have more calves. Uh, we actually end up having uh, cattle to sell because of the fact that we can't possibly feed that many uh, with our low call rate. Uh, we average 10 to 15 percent call rate, where most areas are in the 30, 35 percent call rate. So that is one of the ways to increase income on a grazing farm is, of course, sell excess uh, animals. High production, which tends to break others down over time, is not a problem anymore. <laughs> Um, so I expect, and historically, grazers' cows live longer. Mm. Oh, much easier, yeah. And I don't know where, where that all comes from. Something about getting them out on the earth again. They eat the ground. It's kind of like you and I eating direct out of the garden. Mm. How do you beat that? You go out, you peck it, you eat it. And I think a little of that is true for the cows. Because I know a lot of times come spring, my cows will paw dirt right on the fence lines <laughs> and eat it as soon as we let them outside and they quit that. <laughs> so it's probably because I'm too cheap on the minerals, but you know. Surprisingly, I would say it stayed about the same. Mm. Um, but the cows are thinner, mm. which I expect would be negative energy balance, negative impact on reproduction. Mm. Uh, that said, heat display is much better when they're on mm -hmm. soft dirt instead of hard concrete. Yeah. And we breed for 
fertility. We want the cow to get bred back yeah. on her first time. We've been working for that, and it's in, quite frankly, it's working really well because we have a really high first service conception. We use primarily New Zealand genetics. We like uh, the New Zealand Holstein because it's a smaller animal. It will top out at about 1,100 pounds. They use a lot less feed, butterfat and protein content are higher. And they're a lot uh, more easy animal to uh, herd, you know, to get along with. Mm -hmm. They're friendly. We will be purchasing some Frisians. American Frisians, but they've been uh, New Zealand genetics since 93. Okay. And that animal's going to be like a thousand pounds mature size. Okay. And they'll be bred true. It'll be like a sub herd. Mm -hmm. We'll have the American Holstein genetics, the Frisian genetics. I don't see us crossing back and forth. Mm -hmm. What is that? What are those two words? Mary Jo. Oh, I love that. That's on tape, Mary Jo. We have to tear the barn down for why we milk cows. You can't believe anything about it. And this guy is somebody that comes from down the street every now and then and bothers me. Question. What's a... <laughs> that's a... Well, that's a crazy It's a great little quote. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the smell of cats in the morning. <laughs>